friendos, welcome back to my channel. I am currently on vacation out in the tropics right now, completely off the grid, but I did wanna take you guys on my last vacation, which was through the mountains of North Carolina and up into Tennessee. If you guys have any questions or comments for me, I'll see them in probably right about a week. I can't wait to hear all your thoughts. Go ahead and let me know if you've ever been to the Appalachian yourselves. And friendos, just stay tuned. This particular vacation wasn't just pure pleasure. This was also a work trip for me. Now we normally pay someone to deliver our products to our buyers that are within 200 miles of our home. Otherwise we ship everything out. But in this case, I had just a few stops and I decided that I would deliver them myself. Plus I wanted to meet up with one of our buyers. She owns five of the stores that sell our products and she's retiring. We wanted to give her a good farewell, have a nice dinner and talk about the future of our company and basically if our contract was gonna be picked back up. The first part of the trip started out close to Asheville and then we made the trek up to Banner Elk. Now Asheville is very known in North Carolina. Like it's a very popular touristy spot. So there's three colleges in Asheville as well as the famous Biltmore Mansion. Now I've never stayed there overnight. I believe my sister has. Have you Pollywog? You stayed at the Biltmore Mansion before, right? <laughs> my sister toured it before. It was awesome. She went without me. So I like to rub it get in my nose. <laughs> It's also a very hipster town. They have really cool restaurants. Also a good diverse menu. If you're looking for a mountain town that has food from all over the globe, that's the place to go. Asheville's loaded with those types of touristy stops. What's interesting is even though Asheville is situated south of Banner Elk, Blowing Rock, and Boone, normally, or at least for the last two or three years, they've seen a change in the leaves before Banner Elk and Boone. So I was a little bit surprised when I got there this year. As you guys can see from the footage, there wasn't a lot of the autumnal colors going on in the leaves here. Most of the trees had kind of kept their greenery and I was a little bit disappointed as I was making my way. I was really looking forward to seeing oranges, yellows, those beautiful crimson shades, raspberry, and there just wasn't a lot of that going on near Asheville and Black Mountain. So the first night we stayed at an Airbnb. I neglected to take any footage of that and the next morning I woke up super late and needed to get on the road. So I goofed you guys. I didn't get much footage there. So my parents were staying at Blue Ridge Villas. Now that is in Banner Elk. It's very close to Sugar Mountain if you guys are familiar with that area of North Carolina. It is a little bit north of Boone which Boone is famous for Appalachian State University and it's kind of the bigger town of the area. Now if you ask me this section of North Carolina mountains is kind of the hidden gem because everyone knows about Asheville. People know about High they don't really know this area really well. I was shocked when I actually saw Taylor Wynn visit this area on one of her last trips. So after in a three hour track through the Appalachian Mountains on the interstate, on the highway, I don't remember which, we finally arrived in Banner Elk and it was time to eat. Now my favorite spot to eat there is a place called Stonewalls. And as you can see right here, we're just chilling, waiting for our table. They have a fireplace going outside. It's nice and warm. And let me tell you guys, our meal was delicious. Somehow I accidentally lost the clip of what we got to eat, but I've eaten there plenty of times. It is fabulous. If you are in Banner Elk, you should definitely check out Stonewalls. It's not even a bad price. It feels like it would be luxury, but the price tag says otherwise. Most of the meals average between 20 and 30 per person. So this next day was a busy one. My parents did not want to get up to go to Grandfather Mountain, but I had these tickets that were about to expire that I had bought last year. If it ever rains on the mountain, the people there are so nice. They will extend your tickets for another year. So that's what I was able to do. And mine were about to expire. So I needed to go ahead and get that done on this trip. And the views were spectacular. You could see the lakes, all these trees. You could see the town of Banner Elk from below and Sugar Mountain. So when you go to tour the mountain, the first thing they do is hand you this great CD and it's of this 
very enthusiastic countryman telling you all about the mountain and the different stops along the mountain. And it's a pretty long trek up with plenty of lookouts. If you want to pull over and take a few shots, you'll see people do that all the way up. Now myself personally, I didn't make many stops. I've been on Grandfather Mountain before. I've kind of seen the different lookouts. So I just wanted to get to the top where we're gonna see the swinging bridge and the beautiful view from down below. And if it's your first time on Grandfather Mountain, about halfway up the mountain, they have a visitor center. You can stop there and look at their little shop. They have this cute little fudge shop. They also have enclosures for wild animals. Last time I was there, they have two black bears. It's really interesting. Every time you stop, there will be something different there. They try to keep the environment interesting for the bears. So sometimes they will fly in new rocks, move them, put in new logs, always giving the bears a new fun and exciting environment so that they can have their best life. They also have otters, they have eagles, and they have a mountain lion. And no, I don't mean Alexi. There were these cute little birds that were hanging out on the side of the mountain. So I just stood there for a minute, just taking in the views, watching these cute little birds just frolic around and find little twigs and whatnots for their nests, I suppose. And the air was just so refreshing. Sometimes in living out in the burbs, you realize that you've traded convenience for real beauty. And I think that that's a shame. I honestly think that I would be happier out living in the country. And sometimes I regret my move. But you know, that's neither here nor there. I was able to have a moment of complete zen on top of the mountain. So as you can see my camera panning over, this is the swinging bridge. A lot of people are so scared of this thing, but it's definitely worth taking the little trip across because the views that you will get from on high are absolutely spectacular. There's even additional rocks that you can climb on the other side. Last year, I went with my sister, Justin, and her boyfriend, and we got to the top of the mountain, and it was really, really foggy, and it was just this pristine moment of just taking in that cool air and the fog. You can barely see how high up you are, but when the fog starts to clear, I wish I had that on camera, but that was last year and I wasn't recording then. So yeah, Grandfather Mountain is a definite must if you are in that area of the country. Also, there's lots of gorgeous spots and beautiful hiking trails that you can do in that part of the country. Oak River Falls is one of them. There's also Linville Falls. There's these gorgeous landscapes that you don't wanna miss out on. The town of Banner Elk is also super cute. It has lots of stone buildings, beautiful gardens. The same is true for the town of Banner Elk. They win a lot of awards based on just their gardens that they have set up around the city. They're absolutely spectacular, especially in the months of August, September, and October. That's when everything is in full bloom and looking gorgeous. Also, I haven't been on it yet, but there is a new roller coaster that goes through the mountain. You did that, right? It's called the Alpine Coaster. Do you have fun? Did you scream? No. Okay, she had a bad time. She cried a lot. She doesn't do well with roller coasters. <laughs> just to be real with you guys, there's not a whole lot of cool spots to eat in Banner Elk. It's a little bit desolate when it comes to variety. Most of what you'll see are sort of steakhouse style American cuisine, that kind of restaurant, which is fine. But if you're someone who you like your choices of Asian food, you like your choices of Latin food, that you're not going to find a good variety there. So after leaving Grandfather Mountain, it was time to take my mom to Roan Mountain. And boy, was that an experience. So doing this trek to Roan Mountain apparently was on her bucket list. And she didn't tell me till that afternoon that it's on her bucket list. And it's not like my mom is like on the verge of dying, but she's not exactly a spring chicken. Like just to be real with you guys, my parents were not young when they had me. By the time they had me, most people in their age group had already stopped having children. So I just wanted to give you guys a little picture of what it might be like to take my mom on a mountain trail. So she told us that she had been to this trail before and Roan Mountains in Tennessee. So, you know, we're crossing the border here and she knew how to get there. Okay. <laughs> Clearly she didn't because we ended up passing the mountain by like 10 miles. So when you're leaving out of Banner Elk and you are going towards Roan Mountain, Tennessee, you cross the border into Tennessee and then you see park entrances. So that's probably not where you want to get off and see the mountain. Even though it says welcome to Roan Mountain, probably not where you wanna go because you'll be at the foothill of the mountain at that point. 
you want to go on a little bit further up the mountain and it's very zigzaggy. So you're whole way up there, you'll see these signs and it'll say, welcome to North Carolina, welcome to Tennessee, welcome to North Carolina, welcome to Tennessee. So we finally get to an area. So I just want to throw it out there. To be fair to my mom, they don't really mark these trail entrances very well or have big signs to indicate this is a parking lot. You kind of really have to be watching on your way out there and, and know the mountain fairly well to know where you want to get off at in order to get on your trail. So we pass the trail and all of a sudden we're kind of off the mountain and I kid you not guys, we're running out of gas and we had to stop to put in some. And at that point I decided to ask for directions. This little country store like I had never seen before in my life. They still had gas pumps out where you didn't have to pay beforehand. You literally would just go inside and tell the guy how much you want or how much you just pumped and then he would take your money. It was wild. It was this little raggedy old building. The floors were dirt. There wasn't much organization in the store. Like you didn't really know where you could find anything in there. It was just sitting on these little shelves. I felt like I had went back to 1965. But the people in there were so sweet. They helped us get to the mountain they warned me. They're like, you're trying to take your mom up the mountain. I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> it's on her bucket list. So we finally found the parking lot for the trail that mom wanted to go on. We park, we get out. There's literally an outhouse that you can use and I had to go so bad. It was crazy, you guys. You guys have got to see this outhouse. So if you're going up the mountain and you wanna see this crazy outhouse and you wanna do the trail that we did, you're looking for Carver's Gap. There's just this tiny little sign that says that you'll park, there will be an outhouse and this outhouse is crazy, you guys. I had to go so bad. If you look down in the toilet, it just goes to nowhere. It's just off the side of the mountain. You can't see the bottom. It was crazy. So of course you don't flush or anything. It just falls from the sky, <laughs> I guess, onto some poor unsuspecting bird that's just flying around minding its own business. But let me tell you guys, Carver's Gap was beautiful. It was so interesting to see the difference in the flora from Roan Mountain versus Grandfather Mountain and Linville Falls that are in North Carolina. If you've ever been to the mountains in Utah, that's what it reminded me of. It was just a very different looking landscape altogether. And after struggling with my mom, teaching her how to keep a good stride while she ascends the mountain, we finally got to Jane Bald and it was gorgeous. It's so interesting. There's not a tree in sight. It was truly a sight to behold. It was also really windy that day and cold. Luckily for me, I'm fat. <laughs> So I stayed pretty warm, but everyone else in my group was pretty chilly. So yeah, guys, that's it. That's pretty much my whole trip. I went home after that. I got my mom off the mountain. We drove back into North Carolina and then we left. <laughs> the end. So for those of you who tuned in for the makeup, for this particular trip, I packed the Subculture Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It has that really good autumn feel to it. Mine still performs great. I'm really not seeing that much of a difference in it. It is very old though. Just, just throwing that out there. It's old. I also brought the Coral Blossom Palette by Dominique Cosmetics. So it has some beautiful warm tones in there as well. And then y'all forgive me, this one looks super dirty, but it's the Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism Palette. I end up taking Anastasia on a lot of my trips just because the palettes are so compact. But yes, you have a nice flow of both cool tones and warm tones in this palette. So I'm always drawn to bringing that if I'm going somewhere in the fall. And if you guys are interested in this look, well, I have a short video up of it. Radiating Beauty with Denise challenged me to do a holiday drink look using Using eyeshadows. This is what I came up with. In case you haven't seen my video, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think this Christmas drink would be. I also want to hear from you guys. Have you been to the mountains of North Carolina or Tennessee? Which mountains do you visit when you want to see the world from on high? Let me know where you like to vacation. I always like to hear your insight. As I've told you guys before, at the time that this video goes up, I am off the grid. I won't have cell phone or internet for a few days. It sounds Sounds crazy. I feel kind of crazy. We'll see what happens, but I am looking forward to talking to you guys again very soon. So I'm wishing you guys a phenomenal rest of your day. Please subscribe if you have not done so already, because if not, we'll both have to live in the sorrow of never knowing what could have been.
All right, guys. Have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching and bye.